I have found a new scripture about purgatory, and it will blow your mind, not only because what it will teach you about purgatory, but about how to read scripture itself. That's what we're going to talk about in today's video. If you would like to support this channel in any way, please do so through Buy Me a Coffee. Now, the following scripture, I got it from the back of the book, Souls Visit Me. I made another video about this where we began looking into some of the early life of Maria Sima and the many sufferings that she endured for the souls in purgatory. Previously, I did not know about any of this. Perhaps some of you have read this book. So in the back, there are different references to different quotes about purgatory, uh, some from scripture, some from saints. And in this one in particular, it's referencing Romano Guardini. He was a priest and scripture scholar referenced much by Benedict the Sixteenth uh, in his book, Jesus of Nazareth. I don't know much else about this author, but uh, listen to what he has to say and some things for us to really meditate on. Romano Guardini once wrote that little could be said about the other world if the life of man could be divided simply into good and evil. But man is a complex being in whom good and evil are found so close together that often it is difficult to separate them from one another. Consider, for instance, Christ's parable of the weak and the cockle. Now, when I read that, I thought, okay, what scripture is he talking about? And let me look at that. But before we get into it, I want to talk about the senses of scripture. Now, when you're in seminary or in some sort of scripture theology class, they talk about the senses of scripture, the traditional a way that they say is that there's a four senses of scripture, but I kind of want to break them down really into two and talk about it in a simple way. So we can speak about the literal sense and the spiritual sense. And from the spiritual sense, you can kind of look at it in about three different ways, metaphors and allegories and mystical senses. That's essentially kind of the four that are there. The easier way to look at it is just simply the surface level and the deeper level. In the deeper level or in the spiritual sense, there's always more that we can see in the scripture, not just what it's saying, not just what it's saying to us, but these mystical interpretations that's talking about the spiritual life. This is where many, especially Protestants, but also Catholics miss out on this. They don't read scripture with a contemplative lens, praying, seeing more deeply, seeing meanings that are there that Christ is revealing in the things that he says and trying to teach us something that's very much beneath the surface. Now let's listen to the scripture. This is Matthew 13, 24 to 30. He put another parable before them saying, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servant said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Now, obviously, on the surface, it's simply talking about this separation action that happens in farming. So he, he was using a metaphor that the people of his time could understand to talk about the idea about how God separates the good from the bad. Now, Romano Guardini rightly points out that we cannot look at this and oversimplify it. The reality is, despite what we may say, and, and people tend to say, oh, I'm good, they're bad. It's not that simple. There is good and bad within us. In the bad, there's some good. And in the good, there's some bad. We're, we're all mixed together. But you see there that the reapers take the bad and burn it. And the good they gather. This process is a metaphor also for purgatory, not just the judgment of heaven and hell, but also the judgment of purgatory and heaven. That there are parts of us that need to be bound up and gathered and burned until they are burned away and purified so that the wheat, what is good in us, can remain. Isn't that amazing that that is what, what's happening in purgatory, that we are so bound up together. There's We're all mixed in. Like if you get two different colors, clay or Play-Doh, and you mix it all together, you, you can't take it out anymore. Sometimes you can't remove that 
without almost even causing damage, that it's some it's a work or it's something that the Lord has to do. So in seeing this, we can add to the many scriptures that I pointed out in the past. By the way, here's that video, about 20 scriptures that speak about purgatory, some in a more direct way, some in a more indirect way. But it shows you that do not underestimate the scriptures. There is more there to be revealed, even from what the official church has said. Sometimes they, there's kind of these church interpretations about a scripture. There's often more there that we have not yet mined. We will never fully understand God until we get to heaven. Likewise, his word. We will never fully understand the scripture. Know that there is always meaning in it that reveals more beautiful truth to us. My friends, God bless you, and I will see you in the next one.